We are exiting the RV and walking just 100 yards down to the entrance of Fantastic Caverns. And there is nobody here yet, so we will be going on a tour all by ourselves. All by ourselves. What do you think about that, guys? Great. Just in time for all these hands to put hey, fingerprints on there. <laughs> Come on in. Do we need masks on the... They will give you some. Oh, oh they will oh. give us some? Yeah. Okay, thank oh. you. Um, all right, I, I think she's going to get some anyway. Nope. So. Hi there. cities like St. Louis, Kansas City, and Springfield did not have electricity, but out here in rural Greene County, they had a cave of light. So they use many systems, and we'll talk about those inside the cave, but I want you to see the device out here. because spooky things happen. It's where a small animal might come. So it might be a fox or a possum, maybe even a squirrel or a, a rabbit coming in looking for shelter from a storm or looking for food. They're not going to go up in the dark zone. They'll stay up here where the natural light comes in, okay? Well, just a quick reminder, since we do have some folks from Colorado, we usually like to talk about the Rockies. The Rockies out west or the Appalachians East were both pressed together from the sides and pushed up and folded together. But the Ozarks, our mountain range is a little bit different. It's actually a plateau that's been raised. So we describe it as a big chocolate cake and a good strong fist from underneath. When that fist pushed up against the chocolate cake, broke it up horizontally and vertically. What did it push on you under? Well, it pushed on the ancient ocean that went from the Great Lakes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. And so when that pressure pushed it up, that water began to drain. And because it's made of calcium from the bones, the teeth, and that fossil material that's above your head there, it dissolves with water. 
So we're driving on the old riverbed that was carved out by that water draining the ocean. Now, as the water comes through, it does leave some of the calcite from the calcium. It drips through what we call soda straws. And those are hollow little tubes. They'll get six or eight inches long and they'll close up as a heliotherm. <laughs> It drips lined up on a stalagmite. A stalagmite spelled with a G is on the ground. Now sometimes we can say a stalagmite might grow up tall and touch that stalactite as a cave column or a cave pillar. And then because that ceiling is natural and not been leveled out, you can see this one dripping down as a cave curtain. Straight on this end, but angled on that end. Just like that. Ice cream that would melt. If you held it high in the air, some is going to drip on your uh, cone and some is going to drip on there. Quick question there? Um, how was that one built to drip down on that one? It just happens that way. It's a wonder of nature. It's just been building long enough that it keeps depositing huh. up there and down there. Well, behind you is a big line there that runs left to right. And you can see that on Highway 65 going to Grand Center. When you see those lines on the highway, just remember that's a line in that ancient ocean where the sediment changed. Sometimes the cracks up. Sometimes the cracks, other things besides the white calcium, like the stalactite or the stalagmite, will come in. Sometimes it's something like iron. So in the back wall here, there is what we call flowstone. See the crack in the top of the ceiling there, and it's flowing over with that dissolved iron in the clay. So if you see things like that, that's a flow stone. So it's the light tight on the ceiling, it's the light on the ground, uh, cave curtains, and then our flow stone. Well, from 79 years of research where a cave column accidentally came into the cave in 1941, we've been measuring where a formation started. And that formation, is a growth rate currently on track to be one cubic inch every hundred years. So that's like melting an ice cube, and the volume of that water represents 100 years of growth. That's a record speed. So that's why we do encourage you to look for some cave. Leave your eyes and not your hands, because if thousands of visitors each year, a few years, touch those same formations, the oil on our hands can stop it from growing. Now that's going to be a long time before those touch. <laughs> But uh, we are trying to keep the cave growing. Well, let's go up around the corner. We'll see that little experiment station. So just taking a string, he said, well, in a theater, you have indirect lighting, there's shadows, and not everything needs a light. So behind you, you can see those colors kind of fade together. So if you light them up with the indirect lighting, they really shine. So the whites are a little bit wider now because the new LED lighting is more sustainable, and we've added that to make the cave more energy efficient, be more green.
1861, the U.S. Civil War would have been raging through the Ozark, so there would be generals in both areas, and they were looking for caves. Can you imagine how many troops they could barracks here while a few men guarded the door, another set of men uh, out in the region? Well, the other reason uh, in a scientific tour today we talk about is the cave soil. You see, the cave soil was concentrated with nitrates, especially if you had a large population of bats that would colonize in the winter. They would drop that rich nutrient called guano or their manure to the surface of the floor. Well, in a garden, those nitrates dissipate, but year after year, those bats would contribute and would just keep concentrating. When we get those nitrates out, we would fill a big bat like this full of water. Once the cave soil was added, that slurry began to pour out. It's a combination of both the cave soil, the cave dirt, and then also the bat guano. Once they had a quantity to work with, they'd take it out to the campfire, pour that in, cook it down until they added pot ash. And the pot ash would also cause it to cake and crystallize. Now, when you put that pot ash crystal called potassium nitrate, also known as saltpeter with sulfur, you get some gunpowder. The generals like that. So John's keeping the cave secret was a Good thing because it did protect the cave from the damage the troops might have done. Also gives us a beautiful cave to see today. Well, this cave was not mine, but it is part of our local history here in the state of Missouri as far as mining goes and then also. recorded in U.S. history. In the year 1811, in the southeast corner where um, uh, New Madrid, Missouri is, is a major fault line. And it's where Kentucky, Tennessee, and, and Arkansas come together with the Booth Mill in Missouri. Well, in 1811, starting that December, it started to rumble with several hundred aftershocks up until February. Strong enough for the Mississippi appeared to roll over on itself and flow back north for two days. It was also reported to ring church bells in Boston and Massachusetts. Now, based on what we know in the cave today, uh, as one inch every 100 years, a formation like that would have been 100 years old if it had collapsed 
1811. So that's a much older formation. So the same evidence we see in uh, southeast Missouri is we believe the cave was full of water and as those horizontal cracks couldn't support the weight as it drained, then this section fell. And it filled up again and that section fell and a third time that one. But look how big they are in that newest section even. Just 50 feet back from the surface now. Some great big um, cave curtains, these big stalactites, there's two of them kind of lined up there. picture that we took together. Make sure that is us. Yes, there we are. This complimentary gift from our family to you. Just if you will remain seated for just a moment longer, I'll get that step and we'll get you back inside and off on your adventure. Okay. Got some good dogs there. Not even the not even the thunder bothered them. Your hospitality. Thank you. Teach All right, we just finished up Fantastic Caverns. I hear you. I need a bag. Okay. And Presley enjoyed it. What did you guys think about Fantastic Caverns? I thought it was amazing. I got some pretty good shots of pictures. You got some good pictures? Yeah, I'll have to show them. What was your favorite part? Do you remember any of the parts? My favorite part was probably like the big two twin ones yeah. where I yeah. liked whenever he set the pot on fire and stuff. Yeah, that was cool too. Yeah, that was cool too. That was cool. I know what my favorite part was. What was it, Jack? It was like the roots and, and the ground. The roof and the ground. The roots. The roots. Oh, coming through where they drilled Mine. accidentally? Yep. Yep. Mine might have been the um, giant thing. Yeah, the big giants, the room of the giants. So it's a nice one hour tour or so. Yeah. For a family of seven, it was uh, about $130, and you get a free picture. They take your picture and give it away free, which I think is a nice touch. A lot of tourist places will charge for the picture uh, in addition to the entry fee. Uh, and it's pretty cool that the dogs were allowed. So, so far, we've done three things, and the dogs have got to do all three destinations we've done so far. So that's really cool. Fantastic caverns outside of Springfield, Missouri. It's great for adults, kids, and pets.